And we're pleased to be joined now by the owner of the Brewers, Mark Adanasios. He's got his wife Debbie to his right, and a great seat, best seat in the house on a beautiful day. And Guerra into left field, and it's a oh, fly nice. route by Tommy Pham. That's going to the wall. A junior should hold up on second here. We hope. You know, we don't need to a hamstring. <laughs> Mark Adanasio doing some base coaching. I love yeah. it. Guerra will settle for the double. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to start it right there. By the way, look at that swing on the replay. That's a major league swing right there. We didn't even get a chance to properly introduce you there, Mark. And uh, mm -hmm. right away, good analysis by your partner. Go ahead, Mark. Break down the swing. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a former catcher, so he does know how to swing the bat a little bit. Yeah. But that was a terrible route by Tommy Fan out, out in left field. And Grills will take in the leadoff double. So in position. Uh, good to see you, Mark. Always uh, great to see you here at Miller Park. I know you've uh, been enjoying some of what Wisconsin has to offer maybe by way of Summerfest last night and what a nice weekend here Summerfest and eating one of the uh, local actually we ate over at the Fister at the Mason Street Grill we used to live there before our apartment was finished and so saw a lot of old friends who are uh, still there two institutions right there so much fun here to be in Milwaukee and you've been here for so long you're certainly a part of the fabric of Wisconsin but Miller Park's a big part of it and I know you have an interesting perspective living out in L.A. Uh, half the time but there is something special about Wisconsin in the summertime when the Brewers are in business too. It's very special you know before the game talking to both uh, Scooter Jeanette actually I think's from Florida uh, in the on deck circle here I asked him what he was doing for the break so I'm staying here this is my home which was uh, nice to hear actually he may have added in the summer but uh, <laughs> nice to hear and likewise uh, Murph, our bench coach, uh, is going to South Bend for a couple of days, but he said he can't wait to get back here because he enjoys being here in the summer. So, You know, and it is interesting, and when you think about Wisconsin and Major League Baseball here, and I don't, I don't know if I've ever asked you this before, but to have a manager in Craig Council who's from here is so unusual, and the odds of that happening coming through the Little League systems of Whitefish Bay, as VR drops a bunt down, it's a good one. Nobody at first. Bang, bang. He's safe. Right. VR beats it out. Late covering the bag was Wong. And the Brewers have something cooking here in the third with runners at the corners. Yeah, when he drops him down like that, when you have a couple of guys moving around, both trying to go after the baseball, and it becomes a foot weight race between VR and the second baseman. VR is going to win that race just about every time. That is a beautiful bunt. So VR two for two. Got a bit of an elbow from Debbie in case I wasn't paying attention to that, which I was. <laughs> <laughs> so the Brewers Just doing a good job advancing uh, base runners from second to third today. Scooter did it, and now VR trying to advance a base runner, and he ends up with a base hit. All right, so first and third with Jeanette coming up. And uh, Mark, just to get back to that thought, but to, to have a manager in place who's from Wisconsin, let's face it, there aren't many qualify candidates who could manage a major league baseball team from Wisconsin council certainly one of them and the best one in your mind but have you ever stopped down to just think how rare that is and what a special moment it is for him and for you and the organization it's interesting you should raise that when we were bringing him on board I I done a little research I'm probably old on it now but I think in the history of major league baseball it's only been something like 790 managers anyway it's, it's a much lower number than you would you would think and and so I don't know who else would qualify as a hometown manager but it just in the history of the game I think there's probably been very few was Jim Gander on that list Mark <laughs> <laughs> anyway you have to be a, <laughs> you, you, were you a te were you a teammate of his I'm trying to remember oh yeah yep I yeah, was there you Gumby's, go. uh, <laughs> Gumby's teammate but uh, it has to be gratifying I mean watching a lot of these young kids and some of the performances that we've seen including junior gear uh, evaluate uh, for us in your perspective uh, the first half of the season. Well and it's a good day to do it because I think we have a uh, close to a sellout here probably uh, partly uh, weekend series at the Cardinals partly uh, Euchre alarm clock uh, but partly too I think we have uh, exciting young team I mean junior gear uh, people forget he's a rookie maybe a 30 31 year old rookie but he's a rookie. Jonathan Villar has been a huge surprise 31 steals and you know Scooter Jeanette I don't he's now a rookie obviously but I think he's only 25 we're talking about him at that but um, 
it's been really fun for me this year I have to say well the team's record is somewhat similar to last year's unfortunate record it's a lot more fun to watch this team because there's a lot of positive surprises and and Craig's got these guys playing with a ton of energy anybody who comes out to the ballpark can see it and I hear it a lot from fans walking around Miller Park here about uh, how much they like to see uh, this young team play so uh, I want to encourage people to come out and see for themselves but it's I've been to a lot of games this year it's been fun mm -hmm. for me it's going to be an interesting uh, month of July got the trading deadline coming up I would imagine you guys are talking about possible moves uh, any uh, anything in mind some uh, some some thoughts in, in your mind about uh, the trading deadline and what the how active the Brewers are going to be. Well, you know, David's uh, David Stern's better to answer that because he's receiving the calls. To this point, you know, we've been much more. Uh, we're not at actively shopping anybody. We are taking inbound calls. There were a number of inbound calls, for example, on Aaron Hill. So that's uh, how that developed with the Red Sox, and then uh, it ripened because they had uh, they've had some injuries at that position, and and they had another injury, so they. Uh, Dave Dombrowski made it pretty clear to David he was going to do something, so uh, we made a decision there. We'll just see. Um, you know, we have a lot of a lot of individual performances are quite strong this year, actually. So um, we'll just see how it develops as it gets it gets into the month. Visiting with Mark Adonacio down by the Brewers dugout. Brewers have runners at the corners here. There goes VR. Jeanette swings and pops one foul out of play. I know the questions you're getting the most and I'll, I'll have to ask you myself just to see where we're at but you're hearing a lot about trades and getting those questions but also when do you feel like the Brewers will contend for a division title or a playoff spot at the beginning of the year you guys weren't really pinning down a certain year a certain day but where is that now I mean in your mind when do you feel like this team will be where you want it to be in uh, pursuing a postseason berth. You know, we've been as for obvious reasons we've been hesitant to put a, a timeline on it and we're cognizant that the, the Cubs has been five full years uh, to get to this point. So uh, you know just looking at where our guys are at we're, we're hoping you know come 2018 let's say that we'll start to have a, a bunch of them at the major league level now whether and how fast they coalesce we'll have to see if you think back to you know Prince and Ryan and that other last wave of mm -hmm. Corey Hart J.J. Hardy that last wave of players Ricky Weeks they kind of all came to the major leagues in 05 06 and you know 08 was to see the the banner out there 08 was the year so uh, there'll probably be a couple years in between when they get to the major leagues and and when we you know we're truly contending so you know a bunch of them are on track to be here by 2018 and, and we'll go from there and we always uh focus on everything that's happening at the major league level and these are the players we see and these are the games we're broadcasting but there's so much going on and just having a chat with David Stearns a couple of weeks ago that is going on inside the organization not just your your farm system but your infrastructure what can you tell us about that and what you have seen your perspective from David Stearns and Matt Arnold what they're building uh, for the organization with the minor leagues the international uh, part of it all that goes into producing major league talent. Yeah that's the uh, that's the part that is somewhat behind the scenes Matt Arnold just made a trip down to the Dominican Republic. We got VR to run down yeah. here and that was a great pick he's missed him twice and he's out at second base so that's a no no by VR. First and third, one out with Braun at the plate. Now, now we'll have the proverbial uh, replay look at this. Craig is looking in the dugout, I can see. Pretty quick reactions here by VR. He just couldn't get to first base. I think if he's able to slide and get to the bag, he's all right. He just kind of stuck. And uh, Matt Adams kind of surprised and just uh, tried to tag him, but you know, Jonathan VR making a mistake with Ryan Braun at the play just can't do those types of things and uh, Marquis seemed to have had, you know for a while there cleaned up the base running mistakes Craig Council likes the way he pushes the envelope but uh, just can't make mistakes like that. Yeah that's a little difficult first and third one out there but uh, you know Craig one thing I'm, I'm very confident Craig Craig has been very good at messaging to the guys as to you know what he wants to see and he. As a player, he knows the balance. You know, if, if you 
if you rein him in too much, then you don't get the 31 steals. Uh, and I think Craig, you know, knows the balance as to how to uh, weight that with the guys. Right. right and then, yeah. by the way, when you're here and you can see, it's not like you look at Jonathan's uh, reaction coming off the field. It's not like he doesn't know it. <laughs> you know? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> There's Braun and a pop up foul territory. Going to head into the seats. But as but many as, you know, mistakes that he has made on the bases, I mean, how many times has he created runs with his good speed? You got to keep those things in mind as well. Yeah, and it's, it's, they, you know, for example, they, uh, the fielders know he's going first to third on a single. And so, you know, there's been some bad, you know, pressure throws this year from, uh, from guys. You know, sometimes it doesn't show up in the box score where, we're able to get an extra base here and there because because John is putting pressure on. So he's also, uh, as we saw the other night, is that I was at the Paul McCartney concert and MLB.com popped up, uh, you know, one of those live look-ins, and I got to hear you guys uh, announce that uh, I got to the at bat when it was like two and zero or something, and uh, he got that game-winning hit. Yeah, it was a great moment for him. First walk-off of the year for the Brewers, and a terrific moment getting. Game one of this series. Brewers have a chance to win the series today. Let's see if Braun can pick up a run here with two outs. Got the pitcher Guerra at third base. Led the inning off with a double. Leak struck out Braun with a breaking ball in the first. See what he gives him. The one two. And Braun in the air. Little flare. Falling fast. Everybody's on chase. Mm. And it's a foul ball. Uh. One I didn't think two. they'd get there. I just didn't make it fair. Anyway, I was mentioning Matt Arnold. It took him 36 hours to get the Dominican Republic. Um, he was on a plane that was circling because of weather and ran out of fuel. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and had to land in, like, Allegheny, Pennsylvania or something. The, the glamorous life of a baseball executive. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I think he got down the 36-hour flight to go to, like, 18 hours in the Dominican Republic. So... You know, one of the things David and Matt are doing is top to bottom, uh, they're trying to get a uniform system of instruction, even even to the youngest players in the Dominican and what we do. Uh, and we want to see you guys here. And and, uh, and we're going to work on trying to get the major league coaches more involved in some of the minor league coaching so there's a common terminology. Well, Braun strikes out to end the inning. Mark, great stuff. Always enjoy visiting with you. Enjoy the day. A Sunday afternoon at Miller Park. Yeah, guys, enjoy the break, and uh, thanks to all our fans for great support the first half of the year.